Hello. <laughs> Hello, Happy New Year. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So it's 12.30, so we are going to, to start. Um, first of all, Happy New Year to everyone. We are glad to see 2021 begin, <laughs> so after 2020, that was a little tough. But anyway, so we uh, approaching regulatory professional can be touching, especially for first time innovators uh, as well. A, a well thought out strategy, the right consultant, an effective communication uh, are element to success. So we are uh, here with the uh, session five uh, of our regulatory Thursday. Um, uh, in the name of this uh, session is regulatory implementation, uh, enforcement in advanced therapy uh, medical products, ATMPs, which are medicine based on gene cell or tissues. Uh, and with this session, we are going to talk about regulatory framework from ATMPs, a regulatory consideration in the early development phase, challenge of CMCs, chemistry manufacturing and controls, in the development phase of cell therapy products and marketing authorization process in, in, in Europe. No? Uh, so we have an example here, very, a very nice example so that is out of itself. It's a pairing drug for treatment of one of the most serious a complication of Crohn's disease. Uh, so, CSIC uh, licensed Dr. Delgado invention to Tygenix Takeda, enabling the company to go to develop Alaficel. Uh, Dr. Delgado will describe the drug development process at the Lopez Neira Parasitology and Biomedi Biomedicine Institute that is here in, well, of course, run by the Spanish Council for Scientific Research and is based here in, in Granada Health Science Technology Park. This drug was uh, developed by Tagenis, a company resilient carried by the Japanese phar pharmaceutical company Takeda, uh, and has received a uh, marketing authorization from the EMA. And, and I think that we have three speakers, very nice speakers, that are going to, to explain about all this process, uh, and we are his, they are going to teach us how this tough and difficult process could be a reality and could be a, such a success case. So first of all, we will have with us Concepcion Torrejon. She's going to talk about the introduction to ATMPs and drug development. Uh, it's going to be the tougher part because it's some regulatory and guidance, but she has more than 11 year professional experience across Europe, mainly in regulatory affairs within the pharmaceutical industry, including the multinational Takeda in London, UK. So she worked in regulatory affairs in Tygenis, currently Takeda, where, um, uh, where among other projects with ATMP, she was involved in the successful approval of the uh, EMA of uh, Alofisel, that was the first authorization for allogenic cell therapy product in Europe. Uh, she has collaborated with public institutions in the field of ATMPs, and also with the pharmacovigilance department at the, CSP, at the Spanish Agency of Medicine and Medical Device. Uh, she's also academic research, uh, have a lot of academic research experience in pharmacy. And she will help us to de navigating in this clinical and most regulatory challenge on, on, on this, uh, on how to, to to go to this path to the to market. So thank you so much, Conchi, for starting. Uh, um, the floor is yours. So if you can you. share the... Yeah, can you hear me? To... Yes, perfectly. Yeah, thank you, okay. <laughs> thank you uh, very much, Lourdes, for the introduction. Um, I'm uh, really glad to be uh, here this morning with um, all of you. Uh, and thank you as well, Lourdes, for the opportunity to... Um, to be here, what you give us to, us to be here um, within this uh, regulatory session for ATMPs. Uh, so, um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to um, try during this presentation uh, to make uh, a kind of brief uh, summary of uh, the main ATMP uh, legislation mainly uh, focused in the drug development, but also um, focus uh, as well in uh, the non-clinical and the clinical part. Uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Maria Rediego, 
uh, during this section, at the end of this section, uh, we'll uh, uh, talk about uh, the quality and the CMC part. Uh, and also, uh, I mean, I'm going uh, during this uh, review of um, uh, the presentation, um, I'm going to try to uh, mainly focus in some aspects related to the cell therapy uh, products. Uh, why I'm going to do this? Because uh, the case that we are going to share with uh, you today uh, is related to uh, Alofisel, which is uh, an uh, acid therapy product. So um, I think in the interest uh, of time as well, this uh, selection of uh, topics makes sense. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is my uh, disclaimer. I'm going to give you a few seconds to read it. And um, yeah, next slide. Okay, so this is the agenda uh, that we are going to see today. So the first uh, topic uh, will be related to the ATMT regulatory framework in the uh, EU and the, the regulation that we are going to uh, briefly review uh, is the uh, uh, 1394-2007 and uh, some related uh, aspects uh, about this regulation. Uh, all these aspects related with the, with the development of the ATMP. So uh, for example, uh, we are going to review the good clinical practice for ATMPs, uh, the guideline on safety and efficacy, uh, the ATMP classification procedure, the certification of quality and non-clinical data for SMEs. And after this uh, briefly review of the ATMP regulatory framework in EU, I'm going to uh, share with you some information about uh, the scientific, the EMA scientific uh, guidelines for ATMPs, and then uh, we will cover some aspects uh, of Alofisol. So next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, starting with the uh, ATMP uh, regulatory framework in EU, uh, well, uh, this is uh, basically, I mean, the regulation uh, 1394 last 2007 uh, on advanced therapy medicinal uh, product is uh, the overall uh, regulation in ATMPs in Europe, okay? So uh, next slide. This uh, regulation uh, developed different aspects uh, related with the uh, advanced therapy medicinal product, but in this uh, presentation, uh, I will mainly focus, as, 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 uh, as I mentioned uh, before in the agenda, uh, we are going to focus mainly in the um, guidelines on good clinical practice, uh, which is mentioned in Article 4 of the regulation. Uh, also, uh, in the guideline related to the post-authorization and follow-up on efficacy and adverse reaction and risk management, which is mentioned uh, within this uh, regulation in the Article 14. Then uh, we will briefly review uh, one of the procedures um, uh, that the ATMP uh, regulatory regulation mentioned, which is the uh, ATMP classification procedure. And then uh, we will review another procedure, which is the certification of quality and non-clinical data for SMEs. So next slide, please. Um, so uh, starting with uh, uh, the good clinical practice for ATMPs, uh, well, the guideline uh, initially uh, make uh, a revision of the main challenge um, uh, related to the design uh, and conduct of the ATMP trials. So uh, uh, among the other uh, challenge mentioned uh, in the guideline, uh, there are, for example, uh, the manufacturing constraints and the short uh, shelf life of the ATMPs, of some of the ATMPs, uh, the mode of uh, application, uh, which may imply some difficulties uh, in the use, for example, of placebo or controls, the long-term effort uh, that may require long-term follow-up of the subjects, and also the lack of relevant non-clinical data. The GCP uh, guideline for ATMP uh, also mentioned that um, the general principles, principles of the GCP of uh, ICH guidelines are applicable to clinical trials with uh, ATMPs, but uh, the guideline also mentioned that in some cases the implementation of additional measures uh, may be needed. And the example that the guideline mentioned are trustability requirement, follow up uh, on patients after the end of the clinical trial, and the training on upstream intervention of subjects and or administration procedures. 
So next slide, please. Um, uh, yeah. So con yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so continue uh, with the um, uh, GCP guideline. Um, there are uh, some information as well in this guideline related to the clinical trial design. And uh, this guideline mentioned uh, some of the aspects that should be taken into consideration and should be considered uh, as well as challenges. Uh, for example, um, it, uh, it is uh, quite important uh, the choice uh, of the study population uh, during the planning of the clinical trial design. The guideline mentioned uh, several examples, um, and for example, I'm going to mention one of these. Uh, which is related with uh, the health condition of the patient. Um, the sponsor should keep in mind, for example, that in some cases, uh, when uh, the ATMP need a long uh, period uh, of time to be manufactured, if the subject or the patient that will be included in the trial uh, has a, um, a really a complicated uh, situation, health situation, or even a life-threatening disease, sometimes um, due to this long period of the manufacturing of the ATMP, the patient could die before receiving uh, the medication, okay? So this is quite important, uh, this uh, example and some other mentioned in the guideline, uh, at the time to planify uh, the, the clinical trial, okay? So uh, regarding the, co the cohorts, um, the guideline mentioned that uh, this depends on the disease uh, prevalence and also in the manufacturing capacity. Regarding the comparators, uh, the guideline mentioned if, that if an active comparator if, is not available, a comparison with a best uh, standard of care should be considered. About the blinding strategy, uh, the guideline mentioned that uh, should be at least Maintained for, maintained for subjects where possible, and also mentioned that uh, if the investigator is unblinded, outcome assessment by blinded observer should be considered. Uh, regarding the placebo, uh, well, uh, the guideline mentioned that uh, the minimal risk for subjects uh, receiving placebo if invasive procedures are required are really, really important. No? And uh, the example that the guideline uh, mentioned is, for example, the collection of cells. Uh, the guideline also mentioned some aspect about the dosing and uh, mentioned as well that at the end of the trial, the trial should be clearly defined, especially when uh, the long-term uh, follow-up activities should be carried out. So the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, continuing uh, with the GCP guideline for um, ATMP, uh, this guideline also mentions some information that uh, should be included in the IV uh, and or the protocol specifically, specifically for ATMPs. So, for example, the um, guideline mentioned that the long-term safety issues should be included in those uh, clinical trial documents, uh, the handling of the ATMP and explanation of how to handle the ATMP also should be included. Some risk uh, minimization measures, if uh, applicable for the ATMPs. And for example, uh, the guidelines say as well that um, in autologous setting, the process of extracting cells should be clearly explained. And this process may be risk to the subject and impact on the quality of uh, and the safety of the product. The guideline mentioned, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the guideline mentioned that also uh, some information about the traceability should be included in the IBM protocol and information about retention sample. Next slide, please. So going uh, with the last uh, slide about the GCP. Uh, for ATMPs, uh, this guideline also uh, mentioned that the informed consent uh, should include uh, some information, for example, the irreversible and natural of the ATMP, if uh, this is applicable, or the long-term follow-up and or the arrangement for the remote uh, follow-up should be clearly communicated to the subject and uh, should be as well included in the informed consent. And then a uh, subject should be informed when the sponsor or representative is, pres is present in the upstream collection of the cell and tissues and or administration procedure. And I'm thinking that, uh, for example, in some cases where 
uh, the procedure to administer uh, the product is complicated. Uh, sometimes the sponsor has, uh, well, are in the operating room or even the sponsor representative to, um, I mean, uh, control a little bit um, the, process or the process of the administration. Uh, and, uh, well, the last point uh, mentioned uh, in the guideline is that uh, in case of complex uh, administration procedure, uh, the training should be provided to the healthcare professionals. Next slide, please. So, uh, continue with uh, the, four, the, sorry, the second point uh, mentioned uh, in the ATMP regulation is uh, this guideline on safety and efficacy follow-up and risk management. And uh, well, this guideline uh, was, um, well, it's enforced uh, since I think uh, 2011, if I uh, remember now properly, but now it's under revision. So the information that I'm going to share with you in this uh, slide um, are, uh, came from the, the draft guideline. Right? Um, it's not uh, now enforced, but um, but I mean, it, I think it's a good example of um, what is uh, being discussed. And so, uh, the first uh, things uh, that the guideline mentioned uh, is like uh, well, it's, uh, it's an analysis of uh, the safety and efficacy concerns for ATMPs. So um, the guideline mentions uh, some risks. Uh, that could happen um, with ATMPs uh, related, for example, to uh, quality characteristics, uh, storage and distribution of the products. I mentioned, for example, uh, the transmission of disease, the tumorogenicity and the treatment failure. Also includes uh, some risk uh, related to the patient uh, associated uh, disease or interaction with other medicinal products as immunogenicity, immunosuppression, and continue analyzing uh, several risks uh, to patients uh, related to the reconstitution uh, procedure, related to the administration procedures and readministration, uh, and some uh, others, as you can see in the slide. So, um, next slide, please. This uh, guideline uh, also uh, includes um, some risk minimization measure. And basically, uh, the guideline divides uh, the risk minimization measure in uh, two different types. One, which are cons considered as uh, routine ones, uh, like, for example, the summary of product characteristics or the patient information leaflet. Um, uh, and the other one are uh, the additional, uh, which are related, for example, with the training uh, for healthcare professional or some education educational material that could be provider, provided. Uh, this guideline also mentioned um, that um, there should be sufficient uh, long-term safety and efficacy uh, data generated uh, to uh, adequate uh, analyze the benefits uh, risk uh, assessment of the product during the marketing authorization. Uh, in some cases, uh, the guideline mentioned that if uh, there are uh, some remaining uncertainty at this time of the marketing authorization, um, some uh, follow-up uh, studies should be uh, carried out after uh, the marketing authorization. And um, this is uh, one of the cases that happened, for example, with Alofisel, and um, we will see this uh, later. So next slide, please. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, this is another uh, aspect mentioned uh, in the ATMP regulation, which is related with the uh, ATMP classification procedure. Uh, this is uh, a procedure uh, mainly conducted, uh, well, conducted uh, by the CAT, and the CAT uh, delivers scientific recommendation on ATMP classification within 60 days. This procedure is uh, voluntary and free of charge, and uh, the recommendation of the classification is not binding. This procedure uh, is quite a useful tool uh, for applicants to initiate the dialogue uh, of the product development with the regulators and also help developers to gain uh, access to all relevant services and incentives offered by the EMA. So in this uh, next slide, uh, I'm sharing with you some of the incentives uh, uh, 
that the EMA provide to the ATMPs and developers and are mainly related uh, to the uh, fee reduction for scientific advice. Depends on uh, the, if the company is a small uh, and medium sized company or not. So, next slide, please. Okay, so continuing with this um, ATMP classification procedure, the EMA uh, has a reflection paper. Uh, and this uh, ref reflection paper uh, provides all uh, the important and relevant information about the procedure. And this uh, reflection paper mentioned, for example, that the ATMP classification is based on the valuation done by uh, the Committee for Advanced Therapy on whether a product fulfills on one of the definition of gene therapy medicinal product, somatic cell therapy medicinal product, tissue engineered product or combined ATMP. The definition of all of these uh, products uh, are included in the uh, regulation for ATMPs that uh, we have been mentioned along uh, this presentation. So uh, next slide, please. This uh, reflection paper uh, on the classification of ATMPs also includes some clarification on uh, where uh, a pot, a, an, IT, an ITMP could be classified, for example, as allogenic uh, cell therapy or uh, an autologous. Or, uh, I mean, they make a kind of a discussion and uh, also uh, provide uh, the solution of some of these uh, topics. Uh, so, for example, I mean, uh, you can see there the three first bullet points saying that, uh, for example, ATMPs containing both autologous and allogenic cells should be considered uh, to be used for allogenic use. Uh, okay, so also uh, this reflection paper is quite interesting because there is a, a decision tree where there are two decision trees on it, actually. Uh, one uh, um, related to the gene uh, therapy medicinal product and the other one with the cell therapy medicinal product and the tissue engineered product. So following this decision tree, you will be able to get a clear idea of what uh, type of uh, ATMP is your product. Then also discuss uh, this reflection paper about some borderline areas and uh, show some of the discussion, discussion that has already been uh, performed at the EMA level about some uh, borderline uh, areas and some discrepancy that uh, has been occurred. So yeah, next slide, please. Okay, so this is the last uh, slide uh, related with the um, uh, regulation on ATMPs. So it's the, fair, the, the fourth uh, procedure that we are going to see today and it's the certification of uh, quality and non-clinical data for SMEs. Uh, this is not a specific uh, procedure for a advanced therapy medicinal product, but also it is mentioned in the ATMP regulation. So this is why um, I'm going to share with you this slide as well and this information. So this uh, procedure uh, is uh, an opportunity for SMEs to get an assessment of the data and check if the ATMP is on the right track for a successful development. Okay, so the CAT, I mean the Committee of uh, for Advanced Therapy, um, make uh, the scientific evaluation on the quality data and uh, the non-clinical non data when available. Uh, the procedure uh, takes 90 days and uh, the certification that you obtain confirming that the available data comply with the standard that uh, apply for evaluating uh, a marketing authorization application. In the EMA webpage, there is a huge amount of information about uh, what uh, will be the minimum data that you need to submit to make uh, the request of this certificate. Next slide, please. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to uh, show you where to find uh, the huge amount of guidelines uh, that the EMA have, uh, sorry, has uh, for ATMPs. Um, uh, to find them, you should go well uh, to the human regulatory se section, uh, and then uh, you should go to the research and development tab. And uh, within the advanced therapy med uh, medicinal product, you can uh, uh, find uh, this in uh, this guideline. Okay. So uh, if you click uh, in this uh, link at the bottom of the page, you can see 
what I can show you in the next slide, which is the list of all uh, the guidelines related to the cell therapy and tissue engineer and also the gene therapy um, guidelines. Next slide, please. Okay, so now um, starting with uh, Alofisel, and uh, I mean, uh, and as an introduction, I can say that uh, Alofisel is a analogenic somatic uh, cell therapy medicinal product for the treatment of complex uh, perianal fistulas in adult patients with Crohn's disease. The active substance of alofisel is darvastrozel that contains in vitro expanded um, um, mesenchymal adult stem cell extracted from a subdermal adipose tissue. Um, alofisel uh, was the first allogenic stem cell therapy to receive a central marketing authorization approval in Europe and also uh, has an orphan designation. This uh, product was initially developed by Celerix, later on by Tygenix, and finally was uh, acquired by Takita. Next slide, please. Um, okay, so uh, as I mentioned uh, early in this presentation, I will try uh, to cover the main uh, non-clinical uh, and clinical aspects related to the EPAR of uh, Alofisel. The EPAR is uh, the public uh, assessment report that you can find in the EMA webpage. So uh, regarding the non-clinical aspects, uh, the EPAR mentioned that an extensive uh, program of non-clinical study was conducted for Alofisel and uh, of all the um, uh, explanation that um, this EPAR mentioned, I think there are uh, several few things that are really, really relevant. For example, in uh, the primary pharmacodynamic uh, studies carried out, the animal model use uh, was agreed with the EMA in uh, a scientific advice. Also, uh, the safety pharmacology was performed in a central nervous system. Uh, regarding the uh, pharmacokinetic study, three biodistribution studies were performed in rats and uh, several, several routes of administration uh, were used. And also regarding the toxicology, a single and repeated um, dose um, toxicity study uh, were performed in different animal uh, models and also, sorry, in different animals and also in different administration routes. Uh, regarding the genotoxicity, uh, this is not uh, applicable uh, for cell-based uh, natural products. And then uh, different tumorogenesis, tumorogenicity studies were also performed for alofisel in vitro and in vivo. So next slide, please. So after uh, the assessment of uh, these uh, non-clinical aspects, uh, the EMA conclude that the uh, pharmacology, pharmacokinetics, safety pharmacology, and toxicology programs are considered sufficient for marketing authorization. But um, also mentioned uh, in this AMA conclusion that the stoppy tissue formation and the tumorogenicity will be followed up by a post authorization safety study, which is uh, this um, a study is related with uh, the information that I provided uh, below, that if uh, there are some reminder, remaining um, aspects to be solved, uh, a post-authorization study uh, should be uh, put in place. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and now uh, we have here uh, the clinical uh, aspects, as well uh, mentioned uh, in the EPAR for Alofisel. And uh, as you can see in, the, in this slide, the figure uh, or the scheme uh, of the um, uh, main clinical trial study uh, performed uh, for alofisel. And uh, as you can see, uh, there, is a, there, there, was, well, there was a long uh, follow-up in this clinical trial uh, study uh, until week 104. 
Uh, and then it is uh, relevant uh, that the clinical uh, pharmaco uh, pharmacokinetic studies were not performed uh, following the CHNP guideline on human cell-based medicinal product. And also it's uh, relevant that non-conventional uh, pharmacodynamic studies have been performed. And the information regarding uh, the mechanism of action of allopicel was obtained from non-clinical uh, studies. So, um, next slide, please. Okay, so after uh, the EMA assess uh, all the quality information that will be um, explained by Marian um, uh, at the in this within this session, and also analyze uh, and assess uh, all the non-clinical and clinical information. The EMA conclude that the overall benefits risk balance for allopecial uh, was positive. And after that, the next slide, please. Um, the uh, CHMP adopted a positive opinion uh, recommending the granting of uh, a marketing authorization for Alofisel. Finally, next slide, please. Uh, after this um, uh, opinion of the CHMP, the European Commission decision granting the marketing authorization uh, for Alofisel. And uh, next slide. Okay, so uh, this is uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, attention. And if you have any question, please feel free to do it now. Or even if you prefer, you can uh, do it later. So uh, I'm going to share with you my phone uh, number and my email address. Thank you again. Thank you, Conchi. Well, it's, it's really tough and it's a lot of things uh, that are going on, all the things that you have to do. But I think that is encouraging. And I don't know if I, I don't have question in the chat, but uh, if, if you want to raise your hands and ask a question, please feel free. I have a uh, question meanwhile just to encourage uh, 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 the audience maybe is uh, how many a uh, month do you think that the, uh, I mean I don't know if you have this data but uh, how many months the thing spend uh, how many million on the clinical trials uh, the submission process uh, before the official letter has finally arrived and with this marvelous uh, short sentence that say you may begin commercial distribution all of itself can you give us some data just to have a, a, a concept of the number um, for the audience also to, to have a, an idea? Well, um, I mean, I can't respond to you now, <laughs> but Marian is going to cover as well some of these aspects. So I don't know if okay. maybe it will so be sorry, then. <laughs> after. Yeah, it's okay, because maybe it will be better to wait uh, for the explanation. Uh, she's going to explain uh, things about the marketing authorization and all the procedures. So uh, maybe to better understand a little bit about the timelines, it okay. would be better to to wait for her presentation because both has more or less a kind of uh, link uh, presentation and topic. So maybe um, it would be better if all, all the questions that uh, could uh, arise and uh, maybe better just to wait for her presentation and then okay. we can cover it. If, if this no. is okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's perfect. It's perfect. And also because we want now as is, we don't have more questions in the time. I mean, we, you can always, yeah. uh, we can ask questions also and answer questions at the end of the all the presentation. But I think that it's wonderful that we have here Dr. Mario Delgado. Uh, he's going to talk about from a researcher point of view and uh, because how um, Mario Delgado is the neuro Immunology of Inflammatory and immun Autoimmune Disease Group Leader is the official inventor. It's a SIG licensed Dr. Delgado invention to Tagenis as a, a Takeda, enabling the company to go to develop Alofisel. And Dr. Delgado will describe the drug development process at the Lopez Neira Parasitology and Biomedicine Institute, run by the Spanish Council for Scientific Research, CSIC, and, and that we are so glad that there is based here in the Granada Health Science Technological Park. So he's going to talk about how turning adolescent cells into a medicine 
and a researcher point of view. So thank you so much, Dr. Delgado, because I mean, it's such a wonderful uh, success case. Uh, so thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Lourdes, for the invitation and the, or your kind uh, uh, introduction. So the the idea is that uh, let me to just to share the. Um, Perfect, we can see it if you wanted to, exactly, okay. that's perfect. <laughs> so the, the idea is that, uh, so uh, speak about the, the vision, the point of view for the researcher of the one, one of the inventor of this, uh, this medicine. Uh, of course, we are very far from the final product. Um, we, uh, our intervention is in, in the initial uh, step of, of this, but I think that it's important to see what is our point of view and we had to do to or to help uh, to reach this this kind of, of, of medicine. Uh, we know that the Alofi cell is uh, according to the uh, European Medicine Agency, that is a uh, allogeneic adipose derived uh, mesenchymal cell for the treatment of complex anal fistula and Crohn's diseases patients and based in their immunotoric uh, capacity. And this is important to mention because we have changed the, the, the concept of this of this kind of cells. It's important also to, to mention the first uh, word of this sentence, allogeneic, because we have we are going to see uh, later that this has changed our concept about this, this kind of, of, of therapies. Just remember, this is first of class, and uh, Conchi has said that uh, it is the first Allogeneic uh, uh, therapy with uh, mesenchymal cells authorized in, 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 in Europe. And this is important to mention. And this is probably the reason that uh, uh, Allofi cell received the, the Gallium uh, Award a few months uh, after the authorization of Allofi cell in the category of uh, uh, advanced uh, therapy. You know that uh, this is uh, the un unofficial. A Nobel Prize for the pharmaceutical companies, and this is this is a, a mention that is important to say. But uh, what is really the makes a uh, cell? You can say, oh, but it's obvious. This is in the in the label of of the of this uh, tube, uh, 30 million of cells. No, this is more than this. The alofi cells is formed by different patents, different invention, different uh, research, preclinical and medical research uh, behind this. And this is important to, to mention because this is the base of any medicine. In fact, a is is, uh, is a mix of, of two different uh, main inventions. One by uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Damien Garcia Olmo in Madrid the, for the treatment of fistula with this kind of cells. And the other thing in the, in the right part of, of, the, of, the, of my presentation that uh, uh, we discovered that these cells are able to regulate the immune system and this this is quite important to translate these cells to the to the clinic, as we are going to see that later. And this is the, one of my first points. It's important to uh, patent all all research from a uh, uh, translation point of view. Without patent, it's impossible to uh, to reach this uh, this uh, kind of medicine. Just to remember few. Uh, points about the stem cell. The, you probably you know that there are two different sorts, uh, uh, embryonic and adults. Adults are now the, the preferential source in, in, in this point uh, due to ethic uh, 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 issues. Uh, classically, they have been uh, mostly used for uh, relative uh, medicine, but this concept has changed uh, recently. Um, we started uh, to work with these cells uh, almost 15 years ago with Celerit, the first company that the country mentioned, uh, because they, this company, they, they, was, they were working with uh, adipose uh, uh, mesenchymal stem cells that we are going to call ASC. Uh, they, they were, they were uh, uh, interested at that point in, in genetic, uh, regenerative uh, medicine. They are going, they, are, they, are, uh, they were interested in in tissue uh, engineering, uh, they choose this this uh, uh, kind of uh, mesenchymal stem cells in comparison with other stem cells because they are uh, the fat is, is a very uh, abundant tissue. They are very easy to obtain from and span from this uh, from uh, fat, 
And we don't know why, but the, the number of and the quantity of, of stem cells are very abundant in adipose, adipose tissue, and they have a strong relative uh, uh, function. So this is the, the scheme that they use to uh, isolate the span and then culture these the cells. But we, that we have discovered is that in addition to this capacity to generate all kinds of cells and tissues, we discovered that these cells are a factory of immune factors, uh, anti-inflammatory factors, regulatory factors that uh, regulate the immune system at different levels. Um, and this is quite important because they are able to, for example, to, to produce anti-inflammatory factors, uh, use other factors that regulate uh, T cells and T cells. And one important thing is that they are able to uh, induce uh, this kind of cell, regulatory T cell that we call the blue helps of the immune system, the policemen of the immune system that they are taking care that all the autoreactive responses is under control. In other words, we, these cells are able to change this situation that we have here in an unbalanced immune system, reeducate the immune system, induce tolerance, and resetting or rebalance the immune system. And this is quite important because it is a different uh, concept uh, uh, 15 years ago, and allow us to uh, uh, prove that these cells are able to uh, reduce the severity and the incidence of many preclinical models of inflammatory and tumor disease. Uh, here I have put different uh, samples in chromatherapy arthritis, uh, behavior uh, against uh, uh, human uh, adipose stem cells, uh, in sepsis reduce the, uh, the, the mortality, in ulcerative colitis or other chronic diseases uh, uh, reduce the, uh, the severity, et cetera. Uh, this is a sticking uh, effect, but the most interesting thing is that we can get this kind of, of effect with human adipose stem cells. This is a xenogenic uh, transplant. This is an aberration from a immunological point of view. You cannot use your human cells in another species. But in this case, uh, because they are immunosuppressive, we can use it. And this has opened on one opportunity we are going to see uh, later. In addition to this, uh, uh, the clinical perspective of, of these cells are, uh, are uh, very different. Uh, for example, they are, uh, again, they are uh, easy to obtain and span in GP condition. This is something that the companies can uh, do it, cellar is antigenic. Uh, they keep their generative uh, properties. Uh, this is also something important. They have professional homing for inflamed tissues, so there is a homing for this uh, tissues that need reparation and inhibit the, 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 in, the inflammation. Uh, we had seen that they, they have a good panel of uh, immune uh, action. Uh, for me, this is in, uh, critical. Restoration in immune tolerance is, there is no immunosuppression in general. Uh, this is because this is a partially specific uh, antigen uh, response. They, uh, they were apparently safe. Now we hope that they are very safe. And uh, this last point for me is the most important they are immunoprivileged cells. They have low recognition by the host immune system, and even if they are re recognized, they deactivate the host immune system. And this is critical because we can change the concept, historic vision of uh, cell therapy. In general, we have this, previously to this concept, we have a scenario of the Syngenico autologous uh, scenario, in which the donor and the pathogen is the same. And we need that, uh, isolate these cells from the, uh, from the donor, expand the cells, process, and then reject. This is a kind of elitist treatment. Uh, this means that we need one hospital with the uh, personal and installation with uh, GMP uh, condition to as isolate these cells and expand it. Sometimes the patient don't have enough uh, fat uh, adipose system cells, and we cannot get enough cells, and the other uh, question is that it's timing. Sometimes the patient has not uh, had no way to isolate the span and reject the cell because this is need several weeks. So all uh, the fact that this cell can be used can be used in different uh, uh, species or even between, between different uh, 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 patients change this concept. The new vision of the uh, cellular therapy. Now we have an algenic scenario in which the donor and the patient are different. So this allows that we can isolate the cells and expand the cells. We can reinject in another person, but the most important thing is that we can store these cells and reinject when, when it's needed. 
this we change to, to a different uh, elitist uh, uh, treatment to a off the salt treatment, and they need they make this this uh, uh, kind of therapy very attractive for the companies because we convert or we turn on one uh, elitist uh, uh, cell therapy to a medicine, and this can be produced and isolated introduced in Madrid, for example, and we can send these cells to Wisconsin whenever. And this change everything, and it may, this make uh, very easy the conversation between all research uh, uh, data, the company, and the physician. Uh, I put here uh, that this need to be patents. Without the umbrella of the patent, it's, it's impossible or most impossible to develop one drug. And this is important to remember and to the researchers that we had to patent and cover uh, the intellectual uh, property before publish and communicate anything. This is critical to reach this, this uh, central uh, uh, focus that uh, is the medicine. Uh, just a few samples that, that, that the company developed after this. Uh, uh, for example, this is one phase two clinical trial in extremely defactory remote associated patent. This patent don't respond to any uh, uh, drug that we have in the, in the, in the clinic at this moment. Uh, they were treated uh, intravenously with uh, this CX, uh, this is Calerix uh, 611. In fact, this is uh, allogeneic donor derived uh, adipose stem cells. Uh, placebo versus uh, these uh, adipose stem cells. Uh, the placebo initially is, is good, but then the, we lost the placebo, it's normal. And 25% uh, of, of the patient, they uh, have good and moderate uh, response. Uh, but remember, this is uh, this uh, patent that are very refractory to uh, uh, patent. This is extremely uh, in, interesting, and this is something that, that, that the company uh, stopped it in one uh, in one moment to forward this other one. That is the clinical trial that that supports uh, support the allopecial uh, development. This is the same the same uh, uh, kind of cell. The name is different because this is a local administration and this is the patent administration, but it's the same. And then I already make a donor cells that uh, is going to, to induce the immunosuppression in, in the fistula in this area because this, this is one complication that is related with Crohn disease. This is one of the most complicated, uh, 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 more serious uh, complication of, of, of Crohn disease patient. And the injection of, of these of this, uh, this, uh, cells improve the, the, the progression of the disease. And this is the base for the approval for the uh, EMA uh, of the of uh, uh, allopecial. After that, uh, I would let you that mainly for researchers and, and the people that are working in the in the in the academia, some uh, uh, take home messages. Uh, the first one is just uh, yes, we can. Even from Spain, when a, when a small or, or start starting uh, uh, companies from Spain, we can do it. Uh, it's it's difficult. It's extremely difficult to to. Uh, to reach with a commercial uh, 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 medicine, but we can do it. We cannot refuse that uh, this is impossible. We can, we can do it. This is the first message that, that I would like to, to send. The second is that uh, we can do it if we do this, if we maintain this scheme. Uh, only if we have the cooperation between the, the researchers, very good preclinical research uh, in combination with the companies and the physician in the middle has to be the the medicine. This is the only way to do it. And again, it's important that this is this is covered by the umbrella of the patents. And uh, also, it's important to mention that everyone has to do what they what they uh, uh, know to do. So if you are expert in research, right? Don't don't uh, uh, in, uh, the intervention in this part or this part. Only in the center is the cooperation. I know that there are some researchers that want to be involved in the company, be involved in the clinical uh, trial. This is a mistake. Everyone has to do the, the, uh, the work. And this is the only way to, that this, this is working. Fair message. Uh, this, this is uh, the small one. This is something that happened in, in nature, but also happened in business. And, and the development of, of, of one drug is, is business. And, here we have Celeris, the small company where we start uh, everything, Tijenic that absorbed this Celeris, and Takeda that finally was 
the company that uh, had the commercialization of, of this, of, of our official. Of course, we are in the beginning of the food chain. Uh, again, we have to assume that this, the only way that during this process, uh, the patent, the product, your invention is going to grow. This is the only way. We have to assume that we are going to lose everything uh, very, very fast. But this, again, this is the only way for the researchers that allow that this, this, this uh, the invention and the, the, the product uh, uh, grow to a product. And then just to finish, I would like to, to, to mention something about this aspect. For example, if, if we assume that we have to patent our uh, researchers or results and or invention, it is the only way that this is going uh, to develop, which is the best formula to, to, uh, to improve or to translate this to a final product. So uh, this is all Spain out of many years from uh, uh, almost 10, 10 or 12 uh, different patents. This is based in two uh, histories. Uh, the first possibility is that uh, and this is our case. Uh, we work with the CSIC. This is a, a government uh, institution. So we are under the regulation of the government. And, uh, and luckily or unluckily in some, in some cases, uh, we are dependent of the negotiation of the OTT or the CSIC to license this, this uh, patent, et cetera, or not. But the first step in our case is that uh, for the different patent that it has, we have to select the more promising patent. So probably you are you have something that is promising for you, but not for the CSIC, and because this is a, a it's a big institution, so they select the patent that they are going to to uh, promote, to fill in, and to for the national uh, uh, application. This is the first step, and then after that, if you are selected, you you have between one and two years to license this 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 uh, uh, patent to a fund. Uh, in most of the cases, the OTT make a good work, but this is one step we know the researchers that this is one step that uh, uh, frequently we are involved in this in this uh, uh, stage. And sometimes you look, or you feel like this, uh, like uh, saving the, the private Ryan, uh, trying to save your patent, because this is something that you had created and you do everything Almost in some cases, you in your mind cross the, the crazy idea that probably the best way to save the patent is create one spin off and to try to do some and anything to save your patent because you, you believe really believe that, that this is going to be promising. Uh, in most of the cases, the, yeah, we had this experience, uh, the patent died after one, two, or three years, or even in the beginning. And this is the, 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 the reality most of the patent died. If you are lucky and you have something promising, uh, I'm going to show you two examples of two compounds that we discovered uh, with very potent immunomodulatory uh, action. Uh, and this is the first one, cortistatin. This is one neuropeptide that work very similar to the uh, adipose stem cell cell. Very, very similar in, in context, the same uh, profile of immunoregulation, et cetera. We initially, uh, Patents uh, with CSIC, uh, we license to Engine for the Roman infant inflammatory uh, drug. We were very happy. Five works. Uh, we, we have the chance to, to do it. And luckily, Engine uh, decided to reorganize the research program and the inflammatory program falls. Again, the patent died. So, this is something that happened. Even if your patent is, is promising, uh, this license, it has uh, initial development. The decision of the company uh, make that your patent finally die. Second example, uh, BIP, the vasoactive intestinal peptide. This is one of the most promising peptides from uh, more than 10 to years ago. It's a, a potent anti-inflammatory factor. Everybody is using in different uh, uh, conditions. We, we were the first that discovered the anti-inflammatory factor, the anti-inflammatory uh, condition of, of, of this factor. We patent this, we license to a Swiss company to create the pulmonary, pulmonary and inflammatory disorder. Again, fireworks, we're happy. Uh, this company decided to create a, a sarcoidosis patent and we found that efficacy is, is uh, or 80%, even more fireworks, we are very, very happy. But sarcoidosis is a orphan disease. If 
does uh, uh, economically compensate, and the German of the of the program was considered discontinued by, by the state company. Again, initially we thought that uh, the uh, the patent was died, but one year ago appears in the world one uh, terrible virus, the coronavirus. That one of the of the bad thing that do this this virus is induce one cytokine storm that kill the people. And remember, VIP in, inhibit the inflammatory response, including this cytokine storm. And one other company that acquired the, the, the rights of this of these patents uh, initiated five different clinical trials in Europe and, and, and USA and discovered that this one this is one of the more promising uh, factors that is saving life in, 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 in the world because inhibit the uh, production inflammatory the uh, inflammatory uh, cytokine in the lung and in the in the system and this is a kind of resurrection uh, we have here in the in the uh, on the right this is a kind of resurrection because this is a failed resurrection because in fact the patent is died because one year ago expired because uh, you know that the life of a patent is 20 years and expired la uh, uh, last year uh, we are very happy uh, even because this uh, compound that we discovered in, in 20 years ago uh, is saving life and is going to uh, save thousands of lives in the next uh, year. So this is another example. The second possibility is that the researchers, the sick and the pharma uh, fill the patent. They join and uh, make the same uh, development from the beginning. This is the case of all of this cell. From the beginning, we the sick and uh, my laboratory and the laboratory of, of uh, salary antigeny were working together in the development of, the, of this uh, of this part of the of the of the, of the project. We are many from the beginning, and in my opinion, is this is the best formula because we, there is uh, more commitment from the beginning, especially if the initial commitment is with a small uh, company. But you have to remember, every one of us, even the small company, had to uh, admit that this is one natural product uh, is going to be another big company that is going to, to eat this. this, this. Uh, I say that this is the, the best formula because you have to take in account that, that, that this is the first patent of CSIC that generate one commercialized medicine. In the history of CSIC, 80, 80 years of history, uh, this is the, the first institution in Spain in research, the third in Europe, the seventh in, in, in the world, but only one patent of disease has reached one medicine that has come, uh, have been commercialized. This is hard, and this has been the formula that, in my opinion, is working. And just, uh, uh, just thank you for, for your attention, and of course, I'm open to all your uh, uh, questions, suggestions, etc. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Mario. It's amazing, and uh, um, everyone. Thank you also for the talk. Uh, there is a, a question here for Simon Porter. Uh, let me ask you uh, one second. That I am checking in the in the chat. One second is that I cannot read it. Here it is, sorry. Uh, they say that thank you for the very interesting talk. For an academic researcher working at that early stage in university research, just beginning first animal studies for a hydrohal sustained release technology, can you, what part of the regulatory process is most important for us to consider now? Wow, <laughs> that is for... <laughs> yeah, uh, this is difficult to, to, to answer. Uh, in fact, I never try to enter in the regulatory yeah. part. So uh, I think that is in, in our, in, in my opinion is that we have to make, everyone has to make the, the word that everyone uh, wants to know. The, I am expert in the clinical model discovering new uh, treatment, but this part for me is part of the research uh, 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 stage. So uh, this is something that we have to leave for the expert, like Conchi or Marian. So it's something, it's something so, that there are people involved in the 
and even in the statistics, there is, there is, I think that there is no real expert that uh, control this. This is something that is in the part of the companies or in, in, in other uh, institutions. I think that this is something that, in my opinion, the researcher has to know to be worried. Uh, we cannot design everything. The, so the, the, the message that I would like to send is that we have to, to do a very good clinical research, re reproducible. If this is done in combination with the company, it's much better because they have more confidence with this. And then we have to patent because the, most of the researchers want, they are focused only in publish and then communicate very fast this. The, this is the priority is patent. And we have to, to have the umbrella of the patent. If not, it's impossible. And this is something that I would like to sign, uh, the, this message. Uh, researcher has to patent all, all the all the the the, the result that they um, great recognize or they think that they are going going to be promising for the clinical translation. But thinking in regulatory questions, that this is far. I think that is okay. part of the research. <laughs> okay, we will leave this, Simon. Thank you so much for your question, but we will leave that question for Concha and Maria at the end of the right. session right. after the Marian talk. Uh, so, Mario, I, I really thank you so much because I think, I mean, is you you have the patience to wait. Uh, even the, you have the opportunity to publish all of the data are, were amazing data. Uh, things that you have to correct me if I'm wrong. 20, 20, uh, 12,000 publication per year. The sick have, and uh, you have like 5,000 researchers, and you are you have the only patents that was really in the market. And it's a product, it's a real product that is curing people right now. So it's, a, it's an amazing example. Uh, I think that what you mentioned that uh, first, thank you so much for the message of hope, because I think that uh, here we have potential product that could be a, a drug, but it's, it's a difficult and a tough work and that the collaboration is also key you know, with the researcher, the clinical trials and the funds. Uh, I have to ask you because I think that uh, you mentioned that first Celeris uh, trust you and trust your product and your 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 research and then invest uh, and then was Tygenis but it's also to have someone like uh, the first uh, investor that understand the potential of the pro potential product and all of that. Uh, do you think that here in in Andalusia and in Spain, we, do we have many of these uh, potential business angels, sophisticated business angels of venture capital? I think that is something that we have to work on with the PTS is something that we are working on. But if you can give us some some advice on that, uh, how how was your uh, how how was the first contact with uh, Celeris with Cristina Garmendia and all these people? How this happened? <laughs> so, how uh, how uh, um, my question is how she listened to you? I mean, how you presented or, or how was the process? So, uh, in fact, our, our uh, research with uh, stem cell was an accident. So this is uh, something mm -hmm. that we happens in your life uh, that you take a bunch of, of something. But the, we were we were collaborating with uh, with Celeri in, in other projects. We had some patents that we they, they were interested with neuropeptide. We, uh, I was one of, of the advisor of of, the, of this company, and they shared with me some data of quality of the cells uh, because they, they were interested only in uh, tissue engineering in this point. But we found that these cells that they have in that moment they look some some cell that we have been characterizing, characterizing in, in the immune system. This is the identity cells, probability cells. These cells are blue heads of the immune system. They, they produce a lot of products of uh, regulated immune system. We, in that moment, we, we look that they, they are pretty similar. One, of the, one, of, one is stem cells and the other are immune cells. But from a functional point of view, we saw that they are, they are pretty similar. We convinced that we had to try to these uh, cells in, in preclinical model. They were very brave, and after that, it was a, a, a perfect marriage. So uh, we 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 collaborated in everything. They put money from the beginning, uh, even in a very crazy crazy idea. But uh, they 
the world went from the beginning. Or not only the company, two other researchers of, of the company, uh, Manuel Gonzalez and, and Bill uh, Butzer, they were involved in the, from the beginning. Um, and I'm pretty sure that in Andalusia and in other regions of, of, this, of Spain are uh, people like this. So, so the only thing is that we have to believe that we have a very good product, a very good uh, um, result, and that's uh, just confidence of, of, of this. Uh, and be brave, no? <laughs> yeah, be brave, be brave. <laughs> we have one, here we have, we have one, one example. So we, you, you have to be smart, you have to be brilliant, but uh, in my opinion, Saleric and Tijenic in, in, in one point, they were very brave from the researchers and all the people that were in, involved in this, in this project. Uh, the physician also, the clinician, well, they were, uh, they insist a lot uh, that it's working. And, and uh, it's important to mention that they are also developing these this, uh, adipose stem cells for other applications in, in sepsis, et cetera. And I'm pretty convinced that uh, this is important all of itself, but the next product is, is going to be even more important because they are going to save a uh, life. Yeah, but they were good. I mean, they have enough vision and experience to thought to think that that was a really yeah, a good opportunity. Important that Celeric is also one starting uh, company, uh, starting uh, at a company that uh, was created from gen uh, uh, Genetric, that is a spin-off of the of the of the CSIP. But uh, at that point, it was a small company that had a very uh, reduced uh, uh, fund, but they move a lot. Uh, with uh, uh, EU, EU uh, uh, funds, uh, European uh, funds, uh, uh, Madrid funds, uh, uh, institution put money there. Uh, in in other in other places, for example, Andalusia uh, from different uh, projects, they support all the clinical data after initial data. So there are many people involved in this in this project. At least in the beginning, then it was a, a question of the company. Uh, the, the 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 solid part of the, of the project, the preclinical part. It was uh, based in different parts in Madrid and in Russia, in both, both them. <laughs> very good. But thank you. Thank you so much, Mario. This is very encouraging. So we are going to talk now a little bit more about CMC challenge in the development of cell therapy products with uh, uh, Maria Revierio uh, and also marketing authorization process for ATMPs. Uh, uh, Marianne is a S regulator at the Medicine and Healthcare Product Regulatory Agency uh, in the UK as a pharmaceutical assessor of registration this year. She has more uh, than 20 years professional experience across Europe, mainly in regulatory affairs and product life cycle management of human medicinal, medicinal products in different biopharmaceutical companies and business models. She worked, of course, uh, uh, as a regulatory first head in Tagenis, currently Takeda, where, among other projects with ATM in, in peace, she was actually involved in the successful approval of, of the EMA of, uh, of the European Marketing Authorization of Alofisel. Uh, since uh, April 2019, she established herself as an independent consultant and has collaborated with biopharmaceutical companies and public institutions in the field of ATMPs. And she's also a lecturer in pharmaceutical industry matters. So thank you so much, Marion, for being with us. And uh, you will ask where my question about, <laughs> about the price of the clinical trials and the time and all of that, so that, that we are really looking forward to. To hear. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, everyone that is, uh, has joined the, the, the session today with us. It's a pleasure for me to be with you. And um, yes, I will uh, talk about the, the CMC challenges in the development of, of cell therapy products. Uh, and then a bit about Alofisel as well, the, how uh, all these challenges were covered, um, and a bit about the marketing authorization procedure. This is uh, my disclaimer, and the same as, as Conchi just showed before. And um, yes, uh, starting with the regulation, the, the regulation on advanced uh, cell therapy medicinal, advanced therapy medicinal products, uh, in addition to all the mandates that, that, that were discussed uh, by, by Conchi, there is a, one in Article 5 regarding the good manufacturing practice. So I will start from here, from uh, good manufacturing practice in, in, in the advanced cell therapy medicinal products field. 
So uh, this is the, the, the guideline that was drafted during the years of 2016, 2017. And uh, finally, uh, um, uh, uh, coming into operation in, in May 2018, there, were, there was a lot of discussion uh, by creating the, this guideline because um, the, the, the good manufacturing practice uh, guidelines that we had uh, before, uh, they, were, they really didn't fit uh, with, with the manufacture of, of advanced therapy products. Uh, therefore, this, this um, guideline was created as an standalone document uh, it was good that the scope of the guideline was um, for both commercial products and also an investigational medicinal product. Um, this guideline recognizes the, the, the intrinsic characteristics of the ATMP, mainly the variability of the starting materials, the small batch sizes, the short shelf life of the product. And um, as well that the, the early phases, uh, in the early phases, the manufacturing is, is all, almost always done in very small manufacturing sites in a very small setting. Uh, and then uh, there's a tech transfer to, to a bigger site. And uh, so all of, all of this is, is covered by the guideline. And one point that which is very, very important is that uh, the full guideline is based on a risk-based approach and is very flexible in comparison with the, with the other GMP guidelines. Uh, also, it covers, these are just the main points, there are more, but just, I just wanted to show you here the, the main points. Uh, it also, the, the, it, the guidelines allows the, the release of the product before having all the quality control tests um, um, performed, I mean, uh, received the, 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 the results, because sometimes the product, they have a very short shelf life, and uh, it's very difficult to, to have the results uh, even before the administration to the patients. So this is covered by, by the guideline. Uh, going to the scientific guidelines, the CMC guidelines, they, they are all listed here in the in the European uh, Medicines Agency website, as, as Consi showed you before. And um, there is a, a bunch of guidelines that, that they are very useful to, during the development, and I, I all recommend you to, to, to read them and, and, and follow them. Um, uh, the main thing that the main challenges uh, for ATMPs, uh, I just have highlighted them here. There are some more, but these are just the main. I would say, uh, starting with the with the procurement of the material and the donation, uh, this this uh, activity needs to be followed uh, according to the the European Directive, the 2004-23 and the 2006-86. Um, also, um, the need of, of, of a comparability exercise when, when the, the initial batches are manufactured in small uh, settings and then there's a scale up. Uh, also, the, the GMP that I just mentioned, the requirements for production, the, the, uh, the GMP guideline is very helpful in this sense. Uh, the variability of the process, because these are a leaf organism um, and it's not like um, small molecules that you can, uh, one batch is identical to the other. Here, there is a variability. You have to, to make sure that there is a consistency and, yes, and to prove that. Um, also, it is, it is a challenge to, to characterize the, 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 the active substance that we are using. It's a cell therapy, a gene therapy product or, or a tissue engineering product. And the potency testing mainly related to the clinical outcome. This is a, a headache for companies, really. And um, also the, the vital safety of, of the products to, to ensure that the, the product is safe for use for the patients and, and the traceability of, of, of the materials from, from the drug product back to the, to the, to the donor. Um, Yes, I, although I have uh, here listed some of the challenges, I, I'm gonna focus now only on, on comparability and potency. And then when I speak about uh, Lofi cell, I will go, I will mention the rest of them. So um, when comparability is needed, uh, comparability is, is needed because, um, as I mentioned, the, the, in the early stages, the, the, the batches are very small and in small settings, then you go to, to a bigger manufacturing site or, or be, a, a bigger scale up. Uh, and you have to make sure that uh, the consistency of, of, the, of the product that you are given to the animals, to the patients, and then for, for commercialization, you have to make sure that the development you have done, uh, it really represents what the, 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 the product will be in the end. So that's why you need to compare uh, the, the, the batches along the process. Um, 
also because sometimes uh, you start with research materials and then you will introduce uh, bit by bit the GMP reagents so or, or, or you change the process so you, you have to to make sure that every change that you do in the in your product uh, it really makes a consistent product so so what the data obtained from non-clinical uh, studies is representative for that of, of, of of the clinical evaluation when it's upscaling i just mentioned and uh, also when you change manufacturing sites because uh, sometimes uh, you have to make a clinical trial uh, a worldwide clinical trial in europe in the united states and the shelf life of your product or your donation is very short so you need to have manufacturing sites in different regions so therefore you need to prove comparability between these sites or even if you were commercial, once you go to commercial, you would like maybe to have more sites uh, in China, for instance, or, or whatever. Uh, so you need to, to make a, a comparison. Um, regarding potency, potency is described and defined in the ICH 6QB. And uh, this definition um, uh, mentioned that potency is the quantitative measure of biological activity based on the attributes of the product, which is linked to the relevant biological properties. The assay demonstrating the biological activity should be based on the intended biological effect, which should ideally be related to the clinical response. So here there is a this is a, a very difficult matter really because uh, you have to link the mechanism of action with with the, uh, the potency of, of your product and the clinical outcome. So this is a this is something that sometimes is, is very difficult to to link, and um, sometimes you even need uh, multiple methods to to to. To, to assess the potency uh, during development. And, uh, um, and you need to control your, the, the process changes. Uh, so um, it, it, it's really difficult. And, and you have to introduce, include your potency testing in the characterization, the comparability, and also in the release test. Uh, so um, here there's a lot of work to do for, for the companies. Um, issues in potency. Sometimes uh, the the uh, and the problems that uh, the company faces when they go to the to registration of their products is because the, the assay that they have chosen is a qualitative assay instead of a quantitative one. Sometimes the mechanism of action is, is unknown or, or very little known. Some of the times the in vitro assay does not correlate with the vivo situation. Uh, or the surrogate markers they are not appropriate to to read out the biolo biological activity. All the time, and some of the times, the reference standards are very difficult to obtain, or, 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 or companies are, are not up to date to the most scientific knowledge, or even this knowledge has not even um, it's not even at hand yet. So um, yes, there are some other uh, aspects, but it, yes, I advise companies to really focus on, on your potency essays because this, this can be uh, a big um, a big a big stone in the in the, in the way. Uh, regarding Alofi cell, um, here all, all the information that I'm going to provide you is, is public, of course, so it's everything in the in the public domain. Um, as as Conti mentioned, the Alofi cell is, a, is a, an allogenic uh, cell therapy product uh, from human uh, origin. Uh, these uh, are stem cells uh, coming from from adipose tissue and uh, expanded in vitro. Um, in the next slide, I'm going to show you the extras from the IPA. The IPA is the European Public Assessment Report, which is available in the uh, IMA website. Uh, and uh, this extras, just for you to mention the, the highlights of, of, of uh, the things that you have to consider when developing your product. Uh, to start with the, the manufacture of the active substance, it is very important the procurement of the of the cells and uh, and and to make sure that they are tested uh, um, following the, the the guidelines, the directives, the, the 2006, 17, and the 2004, 23. Um, this is very very important. Um, also, uh, it is very important to describe the, the manufacturing development that you have followed. For instance, for Alofisel, Alofisel started as an autologous product and then uh, evolved to an allogenic product. So all this story, let's say, uh, we needed to, to, to put it in the, in the documentation. And um, in fact, uh, for the autologous product, there was a scientific advice received by, by EMA uh, for Alofisel as well. But um, yes, yes, for you to... to to note that it's very important to go to the agency to ask for scientific advice. Very important. Um, regarding validation, this is just to show the process needs to be validated, as it is a, a complex process, uh, and um, just to show that uh, the process was validated. 
Here, uh, to mention that um, things that uh, for small molecules are not relevant, here uh, it is very, very relevant. The, the self life and the kids where the, the, um, the donation is, is, uh, is being transported. Uh, and just to make sure that that kit is validated. Um, and also the stability of the, in this case, it was a lipoaspirate from, from adipose tissue, um, that the, the stability is, is studied. And uh, it is uh, one of the difficulties to, to, to get the, the product, the, the lipoaspirate, uh, uh, to the site on time to, to be able to start the, the expansion because uh, the, the cells or the ones will die. Uh, the comparability access, as I mentioned before, um, it is uh, it is very important to, to prove comparability along the development, and, and not only along the development, but also for post authorization changes. You have to prove the agency that uh, for future changes that you may may have in your manufacturing process, you will be able to prove the comparability and which steps you will be doing for, for to prove that comparability. Uh, sorry if I'm going very quick because there's yes, a lack of time. Just <laughs> I want to cover the most as, as possible. Uh, the next slide is regarding the, the control strategy. It is very important to set a, a, a very good control strategy uh, for, for along the, 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 the process for the in-process controls and also for the release testing. Uh, it is very important to create a, a, a microbiology control, identity control, purity and potency, also viability. Um, in the case of an office cell, uh, this was achieved. And, and as you can see here, the EMA mentioned this is found to be acceptable. Uh, again, the source self life of the product here, because uh, Alofisel is a product that has a, a 48 hour self life. So um, you have to do some of the tests, the release tests, you have to do it before release, or sorry, before release, and, 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 and then you don't get the results even after the, the product has been administered. So this is something that you need to, to, to support to the, to the agency that even though you don't get the results after the administration, the final results, you have done in-process controls and, and you're sure that that product is, 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 is safe uh, from the biosafety point of view and, and the microbiological point of view. Very important, the seeping, as well as I mentioned before, the seeping of the, of the lipoaspirate here as well is very important, the seeping of the cells to the, to the manufacturer, to the, to the clinics because they have to be kept uh, or to be stored at, at, at between 15 and 25 degrees for no longer than 48 hours. So you have to have a good logistic uh, um, setup to be able to ship the, 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 the cells on time from the site, which is here in Madrid, to wherever, uh, to whatever country you, 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 are, you have the patient. So um, this is, has to be, the, you have to go a plane. So it needs to be everything very, very well set up. Virus safety, viral safety is very, very important. Here, uh, on top of, of complying with the, with the directives, you have to, to, to make all the tests that are needed. And they need to be done uh, with uh, devices, a kit that, that are CE marked as uh, in Europe. For, for the United States, they have to follow the, 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 the standard in the United States. And the laboratories that perform these tests, they need to comply with, with the same time uh, characteristics. For instance, in the, in the United States, they, they need to, to be registered there in the United States. So um, this is something that uh, you need to plan uh, when, when doing the, the procurement. As well, for your excipients, uh, you have to pay attention to the excipients uh, you use. In the case of Alofisel, uh, one of the excipients is a human serum albumin, uh, 20%. So you need to provide uh, the dossier, or in this case, the plasma master file, because it, it was registered with, with this, uh, 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 registered with the, with the with the EMA. And if you don't have the, the, the plasma master file, you have to submit the full information of, of the manufacturer of the albumin. Uh, so this is, this is crucial. The TSC say, uh, of, the, of the product, you have to prove that uh, the, the risk of transfer of, of TSC is, is, is zero, basically. So you have to, to, to make, uh, to prove that. Uh, you have to, to show that you have tested sterility along the, the, the manufacturing, uh, also the mycoplasma. Um, uh, as well, you have to have a, a traceability system because, uh, as I mentioned, you, sometimes you, you administer the, the drug before some of the results are available. So you have to make sure that you are able to trace uh, if, if there is a problem to trace back to the, to the donor to see if there are more uh, batches that have been affected or, or even if there is another adverse event, whichever, even if it, knows, it is not related to the, to the um, to the release or, or maybe to other manufacturing problem or, 
for other reasons. So you, you have to have a, a very good traceability system. So here, as you can see, for Adobe Cell, that all these um, challenges were, were, were covered. And uh, here, the EMA mentioned that, in conclusion, the safety evaluation um, are considered acceptable. So this is a um, good thing for, for Adobe Cell. And uh, overall, uh, with all the information we provided and uh, with all the assessment, and uh, so finally, the EMA um, uh, agree with, 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 with an official uh, CMC package and uh, well, mentioned that the product uh, should have a satisfactory, satisfactory and uniform performance in clinical use. So that was a very, very good news. And then uh, finally, uh, we got the same slide as mentioned as uh, show you that uh, we got the um, the positive uh, CHMP opinion, and 67 days later, almost more than three months, the, the commission decision. So that was a big uh, good news for us, and uh, we celebrate it. And uh, um, yeah, and uh, going to to uh, just uh, here, I am just going to give you some hints about uh, the, the how is the process, the marketing authorization process. Um, regarding the, the regulation, just to start with, uh, the regulation indicated that the, the ATMP process, they have to follow this, what is called the centralized procedure. This is, um, for those that are not familiar with, this is a, a authorization procedure that uh, allows uh, to get authorization in all the countries in the European U Union. Uh, uh, also, uh, the, the regulation mandates to create a committee for, for advanced therapy medicinal products. This is the CAT, uh, the CAT committee that uh, Conchi has mentioned in, in, in her presentation uh, several times, uh, which is specific for advanced uh, medicinal products. This is the committee that authorized the give the designation of the uh, advanced medicinal product that assess the uh, uh, these dossiers and uh, that um, prepare the guidelines. And so, so this is. Uh, this was a new committee that was created for, for this uh, field of medicines, uh, on top of the other ones that the, the EMA already had, which is the CHMP that everybody knows, the Periodic Committee, or the Committee for Forever Medicinal Products, or if, even the, the, the Committee for Orphan, which is, is also very, was very relevant for, for a officer, which is our, our orphan medicinal products. Uh, how is the procedure? The procedure is uh, decentralized. As I mentioned, you have one license in the full European Union. It's a 210-day procedure, but this is um, this is uh, theoretically, uh, I would say, that this is the procedure that is when the, the um, which is active. Uh, in between, there are clock stops. That they are called clock stops. The first clock stop is at day 120 in which uh, um, the EMA send you the, the, the questions of the countries, the, uh, the reporter and co-reporter, the two countries that lead the procedure, but the other countries also, also give their inputs. So um, at day 122, you get your, your list of questions, and then you, you have uh, three months to address them, and you can uh, apply for an extension. After that, the clock starts again, and then uh, if Everything goes well, you can even get the approval uh, at, at day 210. But normally companies, they get a list of a standing issue at day 180. Um, so 110 is just the, the, the evaluation process, but in between there are clock stops. Um, after day 180, uh, that month that goes from 180 to 210, uh, it's, there are a lot of interaction with the agency and with the reporters and co-reporters, and it's like just more informal, let's say, the emails, calls, just to make sure that, that, that uh, everything that is needed is, is available. And also, um, there are some pros that go to oral explanation, and uh, they are just to, 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 to address all the, the issues that the, the countries may have. For, for ATMPs, the, the, the review of the dossier is done by the CAT, uh, the Committee of Advanced Therapy Medicinal Products. Uh, but the final opinion is given by the CHMP. So, uh, you have to convince both, not only the CAT, but uh, also the CHMP. So it can happen that you convince the CAT, but then the CHMP is not, is not happy. <laughs> and so you have to convince the, them both. So, uh, and overall, uh, as Luna asked, how, how, what are the timelines? The timelines, even though here I said 210, the normal is two years. You, 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 it will make two years for, to, to, to get the approval of, of a product if, if, if everything goes smoothly. So there are products that even can get more, uh, more rounds. Um, uh, for instance, for, for a officer, this is also public. This is the, the, the history of, of uh, events that took place 
uh, during the, the assessment. I'm not going to go through that, but uh, just for you to, to, to have an understanding, uh, it was applying to uh, the 2nd of March 20, uh, 2016, and the, the CHMP opinion was in, in December. 2017, but the, the commission decision uh, came in March 2018. So all together from start to the end, two years. Regarding figures that also Lourdes asked, uh, this is a report from the ARM uh, Association in 2019. The 2020 report is not yet available for the 2019 report. There are uh, 908, there, was not, there were 987 uh, companies um, working on, on the re re regenerative medicines. Uh, this is a gene therapy, cell therapy, tissue engineering. Um, uh, 1,066 clinical trials worldwide by the end of, of 2020. These are the figures for phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, for, for cell therapy, for instance, uh, 216 uh, trials going on. Um, regarding Europe, in Europe, there are 237 companies working with, uh, with ATMPs. Uh, regarding um, uh, billions, millions, <laughs> here you have uh, the, 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 the amount of, of, of dollars that are invested in, 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 in advanced therapy medicinal products. Uh, for instance, the, the European and Israeli financing uh, 3.3 billion raised in, in 2019. Uh, for gene and cell therapy, uh, gene and gene modified cell therapy, 2.2 billion raised in 2019. Cell therapy, 1.7 billion raised. So, um, yes, these are uh, some of the figures that uh, you, can, you can, this is available in the ARM uh, website, which is the Association for Regenerative Medicine. Um, and just to, to end my presentation here, I just uh, show you uh, the three pr uh, advanced therapy medicinal products that have been approved in 2020 in Europe. Uh, this is Tolhesma for muscular atrophy, a gene therapy product. The CAR2 uh, uh, for, for the treatment of lymphoma uh, as a CAR T cell therapy, and Leaf Meldy, uh, which is a gene therapy. So this is uh, the, um, the, the last approved product in, in Europe. And um, thank you very much. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, I'm, I'm willing to answer now, or even if you like to email me or, or my phone number. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, the presentation. Thank you very much. Marion, thank you very much because you did it very good and very fast. I, I don't know if, if you can respond or you can give some advice to Simon that say that. Uh, he was an academic researcher. I think that you, you need to count with professional like you, but you know, the, he's saying that at the early stage in, in the university research, just beginning first animal studies for hydrogel sustainable release technologies. If, if can you say what part of the regulatory process is most important for us to consider at this point? I mean, I don't know if- Yeah, yeah. well, if in a non-clinical uh, state, the, the first thing for me is to go to a scientific advice. If they are in a small enterprise, um, then it, there are even incentives uh, for, for going to, to advise. Uh, yes, uh, to know the development that they have to do with uh, the non-clinical development, which is the, the, the early one, or even if they have CMC protocol or like manufacturing, uh, because the clinical part will come later on. So it is very, very important for companies to go to scientific advice. Uh, there are a lot of tools uh, at the EMA to, to even, there is like a, um, a, a pre-submission for the scientific advice where they can ask even how the scientific advice work. Um, if there is a need, they can have help from, from the secretariat at the EMA. Uh, yes, that, that for me, first of all, is to, to draw a, a regulatory strategy and to draw that regulatory strategy to ask for the help of, or help of the authority. Okay, thank you very much, Maria. And do you can give some advice? I mean, is that is possible uh, to talk uh, in a certain way to with these uh, professionals? You know, from the people from the cat, from the. Uh, do you think you know, it's it's always good to? I mean, I think that it's important to go through with a consultant some people. But how accessible are they? Because I mean, uh, in certain 
certain uh, regulators are more accessible at, uh, than those. Uh, FDA, for instance, 510K that are the easier, I mean, one of the easier is kind of accessible. In this case, cut how it is. Um, uh, can you talk with them by phone? The response to you some question by email, or how that's how is this procedure? Or it's very informal, very formal. Normally, for, for these questions, it's better to go formally. But if you have a small question that are by email, person is talk with you. Uh, you have to know her. I mean, introduce yourself, or even uh, Marcos to know. Her. They're very good and very accessible. You can try that if you have money. Yeah. Um, just sorry, sorry. Just to add, yeah. Just to add. I mean, you can go to your local uh, um, or national regulatory authorities. So sometimes are more accessible than the EMA. So I mean, it depends uh, if you are maybe an at the early development uh, steps. I think maybe uh, to have a local contact with uh, the national regulatory authorities uh, might be maybe better than go to the um, uh, EMA. But after saying this, this uh, I have to say as well that uh, the EMA also uh, in the last um, years uh, has uh, put in place some uh, procedures like, for example, the Innovation Task Force, which is quite dynamic. Procedure is not as an scientific advice, even is is like an earlier step uh, of the scientific advice when you are really, really at the beginning of the development. So, uh, I mean, it, it depends a little bit on um, what do you prefer, but um, yeah, the options uh, are several options, and especially if you cannot follow uh, what the non-clinical guidelines say for uh, your product. So, but obviously, I mean, it's uh, to, to see this situation case by case we cannot <laughs> advise okay you should you should yeah. go to this yeah. or you should go yeah. to that mm -hmm. so um okay. so it's uh yeah a little bit to to be think about um what you have and the several and multiple options that you have since i mean from the local authorities uh to the european ones yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay but thank you very much i think that a uh, uh, we don't have more questions, so if, if someone wants to raise their hands or whatever, feel free to do that now. Uh, um, meanwhile, we I thank to all the speakers for the uh, for the excellent talk. Um, we know a little bit more in this. Uh, it's a very tough uh, uh, way to, to go through all of that, but I think that with the expert uh, and with the collaboration with all the partners, it will be wonderful. So, and thank you for all the message of hope that is something that is possible and achievable. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time. Bye. 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 Bye.